Our next speaker is Alyssa Belfiglio, and he'll talk about entanglement area law violation from field curvature coupling. Alyssa, please, the floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Yes, I will come back to the topic of area law that was uh, really discussed, but mainly from a quantum field theory perspective, essentially, and precisely from a discrete quantum field theory perspective. So let's start with a brief introduction of the notion of area law and why and where it is important. So, okay, if we consider quantum systems, especially in quantum many body physics, in many contexts, the degrees of freedom of the, of the theory can be, let's say, arranged in quantum lattices. So we can consider a quantum lattice system. And an interesting question is to ask, uh, what is the entanglement and how is the entanglement distributed in a given region of this quantum lattice? And it was shown that if we consider a given region, that here I call the L, and so we trace out the other region of the system, that here is uh, O, the entropy of this region, even at zero temperature, is not zero. So essentially, there is entanglement among the local degrees of freedom of the theory. And uh, the interesting question is how this entanglement scale uh, with the size, uh, with the boundary area, with the volume of, the, of this region. So it was previously discussed that uh, intuitively, the entropy should scale, let's say, like the volume, because uh, it is an extensive property. But this is not always true, and in principle, this is true only in case of thermal states. If we go to ground states, typical ground states of this uh, quantum anybody theory, the entropy scale like the, the area, so the boundary of the region under analysis. So we can also, let's say, set a definition for this, uh, for this concept. So in principle, a flat system, in this case, a system that I call Psi, satisfies an area law if the, its entropy, so the entropy of a given whatever the region is, satisfies this expression. So it's smaller than a constant times the area of the, of the region, so the boundary of the region. And this, in, in principle, this, in case of, let's say, uh, low energy states, so mainly for ground states of this, uh, of this quantum systems. But why is it important in the, other quantum many body physics since we are interested in uh, application of quantum field theory to gravity and cosmology. So other than, uh, let's say, the, the possibility to, let's say, indicate a topological order in a given theory and to describe quantum correlation in uh, this quantum many body systems, it can also be useful uh, in uh, the attempt of simulate quantum systems, so let's say, if you are able to understand how much entanglement is in a theory, it allows us to understand if we can simulate num numerically the theory in some way, or we are not able to do it in case there is too much entanglement. And finally, as uh, so connecting to the, the previous talk, there are possible connections with the back and sign of the formula for the entropy of the black hole and the holographic painting. So in case the entropy of the black hole, uh, let's say, it's proportional to its area, so the area of the horizon. And uh, the, let's say the entanglement entropy is uh, a leading candidate to, to understand uh, what is the origin of, uh, of this black hole entropy. And how can, we do, how can we do this? In principle, we can try to, let's say, model the degrees of freedom of the black hole and uh, by means of a, of a scalar field. So in principle, we trace back that degrees of freedom uh, to the degrees of freedom of a scalar field that in principle should propagate in curve space-time. But first attempts in this direction were done by considering a scalar field in mean of this space-time. So how can we, let's say, discretize this uh, uh, model? Uh, the, the first uh, approach was done almost 30 years ago by Zrednicki. And uh, in principle, we can imagine to discretize the theory by introducing, a, let's say, a lattice of spherical shells. So in principle, we introduce a, a spherical volume. We introduce a, a radial distance between consecutive shells that I call the A. So in, in this sense, we have an ultraviolet cutoff that is one over A. And of course, we fix the total, uh, total volume of the, of the cell by introducing a uh, a given number of shells and so an inference of. 
the angular part uh, exploiting spherical symmetry, of course, can be expanded in terms of spherical harmonics. And so here you see the, the, Hamil the full Hamiltonian describing a scalar field uh, that pro propagating in Minkowski space time by means of this uh, discretization procedure of uh, spherical shells. And how to compute an entanglement in this case? Essentially, that system can be traced back to the Hamiltonian of a system of coupled harmonic oscillators. And in that case, we are able to compute the entanglement entropy of the ground state because we are able to derive the density operator corresponding to the ground state and to compute the reduced density operator that is obtained by tracing, let's say, tracing over a, a given region of, uh, of this spherical, uh, let's say, spherical system that we consider. So this was done uh, first. This approach was first done uh, by Srednicki in uh, 1993. And okay, the entropy, the, the entanglement entropy in this case is this formula that you see here. Where the, the small n is essentially the number of degrees of freedom we are tracing over. And the capital N is the total number of, uh, of degrees of freedom that put on, on this, uh, on this sphere. And, uh, okay, these, uh, eigenvalues can be derived from, uh, from this sphere by considering, by taking the coupling matrix, the square root of the coupling ma matrix. So there is a, there is a standard procedure, uh, in order to, to, to get this, uh, this psi here and to derive the lambda that are derived from, uh, from the coupling uh, amateur. So in general, we want to, to know how, how entanglement scales in case of uh, this scalar field uh, with respect to, to, to the radius of, uh, of the sphere that we are tracing over, let's say. There is one half because, of course, we want uh, to avoid the, to put exactly the, the sphere we are tracing over on one of the shells, so that's why you see there is n plus uh, plus one half there. And okay, this was done uh, first by Srednicki, but then the topic was uh, also reconsidered uh, in, uh, in recent years. In principle, uh, you see uh, the entanglement scales uh, literally with respect to the radius squared, so with respect to the, to the area of the region that we are considering, the region we are, uh, we are chasing over. And another important consideration is that uh, the, the total entropy is a decreasing function of, uh, of the scalar field mass in the sense that, uh, let's say, is harder to entangle degrees of freedom in, in case uh, the, the mass of the field uh, is higher. Of course, this is uh, quite intuitive. And uh, in principle, one can also apply a perturbation theory, so a perturbative approach, in order to compute the, the entropy in case the mass of the field is sufficiently high. So here you can see that Going, taking a larger mass, you see the, the perturbative approach gets closer and closer to the numerical result, where numerical is uh, the, the standard procedure that I discussed before, in the sense to derive exactly the ground state of the, of the Hamiltonian, and from there computing the, the eigenvalues that, uh, that give the, the entanglement entropy. So, okay, this approach was done in, uh, in Minkowski space time. Of course, if we want to connect the, the entropy of, uh, of a scalar field, that, moreover, this approach was also reconsidered some time ago in order to show that the degrees of freedom of this scalar field can mimic the, let's say, metric perturbations in a black hole space time, and in particular, tensor perturbations. So that's why we, we still consider scalar degrees of freedom, so a scalar field, in order to compute entanglement entropy and to try to, to, get, to get to know something more about uh, the area of behavior. So, but that approach was done in Minkowski space time. Of course, we are interested in curved space time in, in some sense because we want to, to link to the, to the entropy of black holes. And uh, this approach was first tried uh, in this paper that you see here, in which it was shown that if we consider a static and spherically symmetric space-time, so space-time of this form where uh, f of r equal, uh, say, r h, let's say, r the horizon, so it depends in, in, the, in the following, we will see uh, the, the sitter space-time, so we have cosmological horizons and we have black hole horizons, but in general, okay. This is the, the expression we will consider with just one uh, lapse function, just one f of r. And it was shown that if, if we move to the metric coordinates, 
So if we do this change of coordinates and we fix the Lemaitre time, here uh, I fixed uh, equal to zero, but okay, in general, if we fix that time, we can apply <coughs> to, the, to the Lagrangian and then getting the Hamiltonian a canonical transformation in order to obtain an Hamiltonian which has the, the same form of the one that we, we discussed before. So the same, uh, the same behavior, the same uh, terms, uh, in case we can apply this canonical transformation and in case we can, uh, let's say, fix time. So this is still a static point of view. At the end, I will discuss also some possible generalization to, to let's say, friedman robertson work in space time. So in case of uh, dynamical space time with, uh, with a given scale factor. But okay. At the moment, we are able to solve these models. So with this kind of Hamilton. And uh, so, okay, the, as I said, this is the same form of the previous Hamiltonian I discussed. And so in principle, we are able also in this case to compute the, the entanglement entropy. And uh, okay, this is an example in, uh, in the work we I introduced at the beginning in which uh, we, okay, fix uh, some parameters. Of course, one has to consider that we have to put, uh, uh, let's say, um, a cutoff to the total number of, uh, let's say, all in this case, so the, the spherical harmonic expansion uh, in order to compute numerically the, the entropy. And uh, here uh, we set 1000 because after, oh, let's say, the relative error when we reach all equal to from 800 to 1000 is very, very small. And that's why we can uh, cut off uh, the, the theory there. In, we should also say that this approach has um, the problem that, okay, we put uh, a cutoff by hand in, uh, in this case, and we also has, has to fix, uh, we have to fix the, the total number of shells we consider. So let's say in some sense, uh, the radial cutoff uh, is put by hand, uh, setting the total number of shells we consider, while the angular cutoff is put by considering the relative error uh, uh, that is obtained up to a given value of L. So uh, this is one, maybe one drawback of this approach, but okay, this is uh, at the moment the best uh, and, and uh, say also the, the simplest approach to to derive the, the entanglement entropy. So okay, this is, this, so this is the first generalization to the case of, uh, of a curved space-time. So even if it's static and spherically symmetric, but an interesting question that we, we pose is, what if we had had some interaction to the theory? So what happens if the, the field is not free and, for example, is coupled to the curvature? This is important mainly, for example, in case of, uh, let's say, cosmological inflation, the possible couplings between uh, uh, in the inflaton field, so let's say, in this case, a scalar field, and space-time curvature can, can be very important because, for example, some models are uh, ruled out but in, in case of uh, power law potentials. But if we introduce a coupling with the curvature, this model can be, can be feasible. So non-minimal coupling is, is, is an important topic in cosmology. And uh, it represents also uh, the simplest possible interaction that we can add to, to a free model. So what happens in, uh, in this case, we discuss this, uh, so we study this topic in, in, uh, in our work. So the point is, uh, it's to add uh, the, the, the field curvature coupling term. So we have an additional term to the, uh, to the previous Hamiltonian. And of course we have to, to discretize the, the scalar curvature, but since we, we work uh, with these spherical shells in a starting spherically symmetric space time, we know that, uh, it, put here the well-known expression for the, the rich scalar curvature. And of course, one, one can discretize this, uh, this curvature in order to get uh, a discrete term in the, in the Hamiltonian and to compute uh, the new entanglement entropy in case of a non-minimally coupled model. So by this approach, we have this term. And in principle, we can study this, uh, this additional coupling in uh, let's say, whatever sped, starting spherically symmetric space-time. So the point is the following. If we consider a, a Decitter-like space-time, so if we consider a space-time in which the scalar curvature is constant, here we, the, the plot is for the Schwarzschild Decitter, which, uh, of course, is one of these, uh, of these cases, 
the field curvature coupling add a, a constant term to the to the total entropy because of course it's like uh, if we have uh, an additional mass like term to the in the hamiltonian so in principle we cannot modify <coughs> the behavior so we cannot violate the area loss or the dependence of the entanglement entropy uh, with respect to, to the radius or to the uh, to the boundary area we can only modify the total amount of entanglement because uh, as we have discussed before, in case we have uh, a, a, a large mass, we have uh, less entanglement. So, yeah, of course, in this case, is if we have uh, a, a positive coupling constant, so we have a positive term, we have less entanglement because it's like the mass of the field is higher and the opposite in case of uh, of negative coupling. But of course, this is a, a special case because in case of uh, space time in which the the curvature is not constant, so here we we were starting to discuss uh, regular black hole space time. So this is the Hayward space time that is well proposed so by Hayward in two thousand six. We have we can uh, have violation of the of the area law because we have a coordinate, coordinate dependent curvature term. So in principle, uh, area law can be violated because of the presence of a term that depends on the coordinates, and so is no longer constant as before and that's why this can violate the, the behavior of the of the error and, and can lead to, to violation that of course are, are possible for uh, let's say whatever space time uh, that contains a curvature dependent term if the coupling constant is sufficiently high as you can see increasing the coupling constant we get uh, uh, higher modification just to conclude i want to summarize so in this work we obtained we show that in, in principle the presence of an interaction between the field and the scalar curvature can lead to violation of the area law so the dependence of the entanglement entropy of the field with respect to the let's say the area of the region that is traced over but there is also still a lot of work to do in principle we are working on uh, two main topics at the moment one we want to generalize this approach to the case of the entropy of the horizon. So for the moment we work close, let's say, to the origin, close to r equal to zero, because we have to take a, a small step in order to, and we are limited by the fact that by the numerical calculations cannot get, for example, a capital N equal to, let's say, one million. We have to, to be close to the origin. But when we want to generalize this approach to the case of the horizons, and in that case, one usually consider uh, the near horizon approximation, and one, has, one can consider different choices of the coordinates in order to get the entanglement close to the horizon. And uh, as a final topic, we are also, let's say, trying to apply this approach, so to, to study the, en the entanglement entropy and energy in order to understand the stability of possible black hole space times and also the properties of the horizon in this corresponding space time. And uh, with that, I want to conclude, so thank you. Thank you, Alessio. That's a very nice talk. Um, so, uh, are there any questions from the, the Zoom audience? Well, if not, I do have a have a question. So, the you use this lattice approximation, right, for your for modeling your your quantum field. And as far as I understand, this lattice approximation only converges or makes sense to to really take the the lattice limit when you have a mass, right? Because uh, if you don't have the mass, then uh, I'm not really sure how to how to handle the, the interplay between the, the lattice theory and the, the quantum field theory and the massless limit. So the, the question is basically whether you can say something about the massless case using this approach, or whether you really rely on the mass. Well, well in principle, yes, we rely on the mass, but let's say from a mathematical point of view, uh, as we can see from this Hamiltonian in principle, uh, also in the limit of negligible mass that it was also studied. For example, I showed uh, in principle with this approach, we can also, maybe we cannot uh, figure out how, yeah, let's say the degrees of freedom, uh, what they represent in that case. But in principle, with this approach, uh, we can see from the from the, this Hamiltonian that even in, in case of zero mass, we can, uh, we still have this term, so we still have uh, and time generation and we still have uh, an area of behavior so yes I, I agree that in principle yes it's not intuitive in that case how to to let's say what how we can consider degrees of freedom mass as degrees of freedom in the lattice model but in principle also in case of uh, mass equal to zero in the limit of m equal to zero we still have area of behavior in case of minimally coupled theories 
So yes, we can see from uh, from here. So, Amazing. Yeah. All right. So Alessio, let's thank you again. Thank you.